The link in the description is only there to see the source material. Do not under any circumstance go to these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support witch hunts or lynch mobbing, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take care and leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. Was my foreshadowing that obvious? Well, yeah. Here's the target I never thought I'd wind up having issues with. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the Quarter Guy, a long-time common name within the Countdown community, and one who seems to be fairly well respected at that. I admit that leading up to this video I wasn't too familiar with his countdowns as a whole, so imagine my thought processes when I watched his top 10 dumbest bosses idea and walked out with a commentary script. What problems did little homie have? Allow me to explain. Boss battles can be a real highlight of a game. They can be fun, exciting, atmospheric, full of creativity. And then there are bosses that you just look at and say, My god, someone actually thought this was a good idea? It's one thing when bosses are bad just because their cases of good ideas gone wrong. On the other hand, there have been plenty of times I've looked at bosses and wondered, how could these have been even put on the drawing board in the first place, let alone been approved for the final game? This is the kind of boss that's being put on the spot here. Bosses whose ideas are just so stupid and bad that you have to wonder how the people who came up with them ever got hired in the first place. Now, I'm not including joke bosses that are stupid on purpose. I'm looking at bosses that people actually believed were good ideas at the time. Let's hope your brain cells can survive what you're about to see here. It's game time! So I left this in to set up one of my biggest issues that I had with QG's list overall. He's basing this solely on ideas of bosses. Allow me to get this out of the way from the get-go so I don't wind up repeating it ad nauseum. QG's stupid bosses ideas list isn't a list on stupid ideas. His list is a disguised hated bosses list with the ideas as a justification. I know this because several entries on this very same list all have the same idea to them, being that they're bosses that are just larger versions of already established sandbag enemies. That's fine to dislike on its own, I won't say QG is in the wrong for not liking the idea of a bigger enemy as a boss battle, although I do have issues with how he tries justifying it, and I'll get to that later, but as it stands on its own, it's not a problem. The problem becomes that the list implies that it's based on the ideas of bosses, as given by his introductory statements here, and the concept of bigger enemies as bosses returns several times throughout QG's list as various one-off bosses when he could put the whole thing in one entry and keep the list on topic. Now, I'm skipping his number 10 segment as he actually explains why Flint's team choice in Diamond and Pearl is a bad idea from the get-go, although playing the Bowser Dude X clip here is so tempting. Eh. Fuck it, it's too good to go to waste. Does Flint become a hateable character in Diamond and Pearl just because three of his five Pokemon are not fire types? Flint carries himself as a fire type specialist, but his team has only two fire types, those being Infernape and Rapidash, with the other three being Driftblim, Steelix, and Lopunny of all things. Seriously, how lazy can you get? All that the fight with a giant metal daddy consists of is him peeking out of his helmet followed by a huge jump that shakes down normal metals from the ceiling. I guess it fits the theme of the level and him landing on you seriously hurts, but come on. Couldn't we have come up with something that has a little more creativity than just this? I mean, it's not like we can't use metals creatively. Mega Man 6 did it with Matonger Z and Mr. X Stage 3. This, on the other hand, looks like the boss designers weren't even trying. Would that not have made it a bad execution to the idea and not actually be a bad idea itself? I mean, yeah, earlier you do explain your quarrels with the idea of a bigger sandbag. Grant you, you never explain why it's a bad idea to begin with, but whatever. Here you even imply that using these types of enemies isn't inherently a bad idea due to how creatively they can and have been used in other situations. And that doesn't even acknowledge the problem of you saying that this giant metal in the context of the rest of the level makes sense, and when put beside your qualms with Flint from Diamond and Pearl, whose idea was poor because there was only two primary based fire types in the regional decks for the specific games that you mentioned, the giant metal seems out of place being above Flint in this regard. Final Fantasy V as a whole was seen as being more light-hearted than its predecessors and could often be seen as a satire of typical RPG tropes of the time. This could be seen in such things as main villain x constant laughing and monologuing, Gilgamesh's flamboyance, and Gallop's heroic last stand after his HP hit zero. Uh-huh. Now, I'm not including joke bosses that are stupid on purpose. And you say Final Fantasy V can be seen as satire, as in a joking manner. Perhaps this is poor wording on your end, however this seems very contradictory to your ground rules established earlier. I suppose that may not entirely mean it is satire, but if there are things like the aforementioned that seem to poke at the typical RPG cliches, perhaps it's not too far-fetched of an idea. That said, these two clips will come back to relevancy by the end of the next interjection. At the bottom is the final shard, but it's guarded by the famed mimic Gogo. -Go. Now the idea behind this boss is that, him being a mimic, he'll copy everything you do, only stronger. Defend, and he'll defend. Heal, he'll heal more. Attack him, and he'll counter for insane damage, probably killing the target. So in order to defeat him, you'll need to predict what he'll do. What does this mean? Here, let me give you a hint. Does that answer your question?
Yep, that's right. You defeat him by copying him, waiting for you to do something for him to copy. In other words, by doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, you can defeat him normally by doing enough damage with the right setup, but by doing so, you run the risk of triple cast meteor. Oh, and the timer's still ticking the entire time you're waiting, so if you're almost out of time when you reach him, you may as well just reload your save. And someone thought this would be a good puzzle boss. Yeah, punchline. More like a punchline to the loins. Well, at least we can get the last shard. Why am I not surprised? And here's where the aforementioned setup topples the dominoes. QG, the whole reason doing nothing beats famed Mimic Dogo by your own footage is that you are mastering the art of mimicry towards himself. Hell, the fact that this is even an option tells me that he may not be a boss to be taken seriously, especially given your prior footage based example of the Golem Overlord from Chrono Trigger having a practically similar win condition to Gogo and is widely considered to be a flying punchline. This is further evidenced by the fact that his theme is the goddamn Moogle music. But assuming he is supposed to be taken seriously and is not just another example of Square taking the piss at the RPG cliches that they themselves inadvertently created, it's not like you explain the concept of mimicking the mimic in a puzzle based boss battle to be inherently a dumb idea. It's not like there's any puzzle Puzzles in the way of you getting two go-go, giving you an upwards to six and a half minutes to wait out a two minute wait time for one, and for two, it's a goddamn puzzle that forces you to think outside the box of just what the fuck to do with an alternative method of strategizing your way out of supposed stupidity. With that, you can silence go-go so he can't use his mimic ability, or cause him to hurt himself before he casts his triple meteor by summoning Carbuncle, hitting him with elemental magic, and shooting below 14,000 damage until you dwindle him low enough to just finish him off with rapid fire. At best, this seems to be a boss battle based on thought more than brute strength given the time limit, which would require fast thinking skills or two minute slow ones if nothing else, and at worst it's a joke that you plastered on here after saying you wouldn't. First off, let's get the obvious issue with this boss out of the way. It's just a giant slime. That's... that's an issue? Why? Dude, not everyone thinks the QG way of thinking. I for one enjoy the King Slime boss from Terraria, and that's just a giant slime too. How is this an obvious problem? Actually, no, scratch that. It's essentially a fusion of three different varieties of slimes. Oh, so there's no explanation as to why we're just gonna move on with our lives as if you never said anything. Got it. I've already said that bosses that are just larger versions of standard enemies is a stupid idea for a boss. Though we have no idea why, considering those entries, but please do go on. No one else makes for a stupid boss idea? Enemy rushes. Because why go through the effort of actually designing a boss fight, you can just send a bunch of enemies at the hero and call it a day. So, what happens when you combine the two? Well, you know it's not a good sign of intelligent boss design when your boss is literally named Dumb Drum. So, the drum drops once, spawns two critters. Defeat them, then the drum drops twice. The pattern repeats with slip us. Next is claptraps. Then clumps. Then armies. Then it just blows itself up. Wait, what? So all there is to this boss is just avoiding a falling drum a few times and defeating a few enemies? And this is the boss of World 5, so you're expecting better than what you've gotten so far. But then again, this is the first Donkey Kong Country game we're talking about, and all the bosses in this game, aside from K. Roll himself, are just larger enemies in the first place. So the bar is already set low. But this boss doesn't even clear that bar. It's just an oil drum that stomps on you and serves as a floating bus for Kremlin troops. And not even particularly threatening ones either. What, was the point of this boss to stupefy gamers until they became so incredulous that they stopped paying attention? Because that's really the only way anyone would die to this thing. Of course, you'd have to be paying serious attention to even get this far, so a tactic like that wouldn't even work. I guess K. Roll was right. He really is surrounded by fools. QG, to put it bluntly, this has to be one of the dumbest justifications for a design in a countdown I've ever heard. And I have no idea if it's supposed to be a joke, or if you just had a brain fart writing the script at 2 in the morning. I hope it's the former, but to address the latter, Dumb Drum's concept by nature is an enemy gauntlet, meaning the challenge comes from the enemies itself. You can argue it's not much of a challenge all you want, the idea was to put the player in a situation where they have to deal with a long string of enemies in the game like any waved base gauntlet would do. Then Dumb Drum adds to that concept by attacking the player himself, and if the player doesn't dodge fast enough then he'll continue to try to smash them until they dodge, leaving them with less health to deal with the rest of the enemies. Dumb Drum also speeds up with each attack which a player may have a problem with varying of the skill level of said player. Their goal wasn't to bore the player with monotony, it was to test their skill level. On what planet could this possibly be considered okay? It's bad enough that Other M had a disgusting love affair with these search segments that completely wrecked the game's pacing. But somehow, someone had the idea to add combat to it, lock Samus in place, call it a boss fight, and make that the showdown with the revived mother brain. Just... How the fuck do you fuck this up so fucking badly? And we end the list with Quarter Guy asking how developers fucked up a supposedly stupid idea. This has me asking if he remembers the topic of this whole list. 
QG, I want to believe this is a fluke. There's no chance in hell someone this respected can make a list that forgets its own purpose like this on the regular. Final thoughts. Alright, to breathe easier, obviously I didn't find fault with this whole list. I found a lot of entries to be problematic, what with you assuming everyone understands the problems with a few concepts of boss battles and thus felt the need to not explain them, as well as several very off-putting reasonings and logics just crammed in there that breaks the whole topic of the video in question. If you had just called it dumbest boss ideas, I wouldn't have thought much of it. After all, my top 10 bullshit levels is at the end of the day just a disliked video game levels list. I can understand the adding flavor to video titles, but you pitched the idea that the title was what we were going to see in your intro via the introductory statements before going on to add not boss ideas, but just boss battles to the list. So, that's uh... It's a bit awkward, um, I'm not trying to end this video, not with advice or a funny outro sketch, so, uh... <laughs> You're still here?